Living in Christ's Church, Session 18. 教会论与教会生活，第十八讲。我们来到第六章 ，Chapter Six, The Community of the Kingdom. 国度的群体，国度的群体。引言 ，Introduction. One of the most beautiful sights of our jet age is the carpet of light made by a great city seen from the air at night. 我们今天喷射飞机的年代的一个呃奇观呢、啊，就是从天空夜里看下去，一个大城市的灯光好像地毯一般的美丽。It looks as though heaven were turned upside down， 好像天空倒转过来。And that the soft warm stars of a new firmament were shining from below， 好像从地往上。一个重心的穹苍，在那里发亮，又柔软，又温馨。What a different view of the same city a traveler gets after he has landed. 这个坐飞机的人呢、啊，降落之后进到城里所看到同一个城，那景象就完全不一样了。The harsh street lights cast weird shadows across alleys of squalor, where crime prowls in the darkness. 这些城市的灯光，摄影到一些的黑影，在巷子里头有犯罪，有啊、呃、贫穷。The fairyland city from above becomes a nightmare city close up. 居住林下所看到的啊、呃、这个梦境的城市，成为眼前的噩梦的城市。How do we see the city today? 今天我们如何看待城市呢 ？The Christian Church has often feared and fled the city. 基督教的教会往往惧怕城市，逃离城市 ，to find refuge in the suburbs， 在郊区的城镇里找到避难所。But today, a change is taking place. 但是今天。有啊、uh, 改变的趋向。Suburban Christians are beginning to realize that Christ's church is still to be found in the city, and that the Spirit of God is at work there. 住在郊区的基督徒开始发现，原来在城市里仍然存在着基督的教会的，上帝的灵仍然在城市中做工。Third world cities. Represent the greatest mission field of the modern world. 第三世界的城市就是当今的最大的宣教工厂。The church worldwide is recognizing the importance of urban evangelism. 普世的教会都看到了城市宣教的重要性。我这里打岔一下，威敏斯的神学院当时呢，在一九七十八十年代呢。是开拓城市宣教研究的一个很重要的开荒的的一个的神学院。第一段 ，The City of God， 上帝之城。The Bible too is concerned with the city， 圣经也关注城市的。It speaks not of one city but of two， 圣经论到的不是一个城市，乃是两个。The city of the present age, 现今世代的城市 and the city of the age to come, 和来世世代的城市 When Imperial Rome fell to Alaric the Visigoth in AD 410, 当在主后四百一十年，帝国的罗马城被蛮族西哥德族的酋长啊。胜败之后 ，pagan leaders blamed Christian teaching for weakening the city by abolishing heathen worship. 异教的罗马的领袖就责怪基督教的教训，因为基督教的教训呢，废除了异教的偶像敬拜，这样子让罗马城显得软弱了。In reply. Augustine wrote a great classic, "The City of God." Augustine 回答这个控告，写了一本
居住，上帝之城。In order to understand the Christian's responsibility to the earthly city, 我们若要明白基督徒对地上的城的责任的话 ，we must understand his citizenship in the heavenly city. 我们必须先了解他在天上之城的国民身份。The book of Revelation brings the contrast between the two cities to a fearful climax of judgment. 圣经中的启示录将两个城市之之间的对照。带到最后那个大而可畏的审判的高峰。We hear the lamentation over Babylon. 我们听到为巴比伦城的哀叹。The city of this world 就是这个世界的城。启示录第十八章。And the exultant joy over the coming from heaven of the new Jerusalem, the city of God. 同时呢，有欢喜快乐的的呼声，因为从天上。而来的，上帝的城，新耶路撒冷，来了。启示录第二十一章、十八章、二十一章。Babylon is pictured as a harlot. 巴比伦城是一个淫妇。The New Jerusalem as a bride. 新耶路撒冷是新娘。One city rests under the judgment of death. 一个城市在死。The 审判之下，沉默。In the other, there flows the river of life. 另外一个城里，生命之河正在涌流。The imagery of the last book of the Bible is drawn from all that goes before. 圣经最后一卷书启示录里的呃的比喻，都是从圣经六十五卷书而来的。And the Old Testament. 在旧约圣经 ，Babylon, the capital of the heathen empire, 巴比伦这个异教的帝国的首都 ，contrasts with Jerusalem, the city where God has said His name. 与耶路撒冷相对照，耶路撒冷是上帝设立他的名的城市。Again and again, God delivered Jerusalem from surrounding armies. 一次的，再次的，上帝搭救耶路撒冷脱离周围的军队。But when Jerusalem itself had become a city of idols, 但是当耶路撒冷自己成为一个敬拜偶像的城市的时候呢 ，God used Babylon to conquer and destroy it. 上帝用巴比伦来胜过，来毁灭耶路撒冷。Yet Babylon must be judged for its fierce enmity to the city and people of God. 但是巴比伦对上帝的城，上帝子民这种的。强烈的敌意必须受到审判 ，and Babylon and the empires that succeeded will be demolished by the stone cut without hands. 巴比伦和后来要来的帝国都会用那个不是人手所凿出来的石头毁灭的。God's kingdom must at last replace every earthly city and empire. 上帝的国度最后必取代地上每一个城市。每一个帝国的。The contrast underlies the good news of the kingdom in the New Testament. 这个的对照，就是要强调新约圣经天国的好消息。God establishes His kingdom, His city. 上帝设立他的国度，他的城市。The great choice is forced upon men. 人们必须啊。要做出一个选，伟大的选择。The choice between the kingdom of light and of darkness， 选择光明之国度或黑暗之国度。Between Christ and Belial， 选择基督还是巴力。God's own presence is the glory of the city of God。上帝之城的荣耀乃是上帝亲自的同在。God is in the midst of her， she shall not be moved。God will help her at the dawn of the morning. Psalm 46, verse 5. 诗篇四十六篇第五节说到上帝在他的城里的荣耀。上帝在其中，城必不动摇。到天一亮，上帝必帮助这城的。The writer of Hebrews tells us that 希伯来书的作者告诉我们 ，Abraham, the pilgrim of faith, 
lived as a sojourner in the land of promise. 亚伯拉罕信心的过路客，在应许之地只是一个过路客而已。希伯来书第十一章第十节。因为他等候那座有根基的城，就是上帝所经营、所建造的。The men and women of faith were strangers and pilgrims. 这些信心的伟人，不论男女，是陌生者，是过路者。Because they desired a better country. 因为他们渴慕更美的家乡 ，that is a heavenly. 就是天上的家乡。希伯来书第十一章第十六节，他们却羡慕一个更美的家乡，就是在天上的。所以上帝被称为他们的上帝，并不以为耻，因为他已经给他们预备了一座城。The pride that built the city and tower of Babel still motivates the builders of Megapolis, USA. 建造巴比塔那种的骄傲，今天仍然是美国巨大城市的建造者的原动力。The Bible predicts the final storm of God's wrath. 圣经预言，上帝的审判是最后的大风暴 ，that will sweep away every proud tower， 必定会吹灭每一座傲慢的高塔。The wall of Babylon will fall. Babylon 的墙必定倒塌 Indeed, every wall will fall. 每一道墙都必倒塌 Here, there is no abiding city. 在这个世界没有长存的城市的以西结书第三十八章第二十节，甚至海中的鱼，天空的鸟。田野的兽，并地上一切的昆虫和其上的众人，因见我的面都就都震动，山岭必崩裂，啊，土岩必塌陷，墙垣必都必塌倒，啊，每一道墙都要倒下来的。希伯来书第十三章第十四节，我们在这里本没有长存的城，乃是寻求那将来的城。In the last cosmic convulsion of judgment, 在最后一次翻转全世界的宇宙性的审判 ，only that which cannot be shaken will remain. 还能够存留的，就是那些必不动摇的。It is a city of God, 就是上帝的城 ，the kingdom of God that cannot be shaken, 就是上帝的国度，就是必不动摇的国度。希伯来书第十二章二十七。二十八节，这再一次的话是指明被震动的，就是受造之物都要挪去，使那不被震动的长存。所以，我们既得了不能震动的国，就当感恩，照上帝所喜悦的，用虔诚敬畏的心侍奉上帝。The desert has claimed some of the great cities of antiquity. 在古代的一些伟大的城市，后来都被沙漠吞灭了 ，and the vines of the jungles have swallowed up others. 其他的就成为森林了。In Berlin, Stuttgart, and other European cities, 在德国的柏林、Stuttgart 还有其他的城市 ，there are great hills made of the rubble of the bombings of World War II. 有些的呃山林。其实都是第二次世界大战所炸掉的废物堆。The destruction and the rebuilding of cities in our time， 在我们这个时代的城市的毁灭和重建 ，only serves to remind us that， 只不过提醒我们 ，no city of man endures forever， 没有一个人造的城是永远长存的。Those who live by faith know that。They have no abiding city here. 借着信心而生活的人知道，在这里地上没有长存的城市的。They seek after the city that is to come. 他们追求的是将要来到的城市。Like Abraham and the patriarchs, 
他们好像亚伯拉罕和列祖一样 ，they are ready to live in tents as they journey on to the promised city。他们愿意住在帐篷里，走到那个应许之城。希伯来书第十一章第九节，他因着信就在所应许之地做客，好像在异地居住帐篷。与那同盟一个应许的以撒、雅各一样 ，They know that neither Babylon nor Jerusalem on earth is home。他们知道，在地上的巴比伦甚至耶路撒冷都不是他们的家园。Jerusalem above is their mother city。在天上的，在上的耶路撒冷才是他们的家乡，他们的母亲。加拉太书第四章第二十六节。但那在上的耶路撒冷是自主的，他是我们的母，啊，母亲。The magnificence of Babylon does not impress them。他们并不欣赏巴比伦的华美。The rituals of earthly Jerusalem cannot bind them。而地上耶路撒冷的仪式也不捆绑、不约束他们。They are ready to join their savior outside its gates。他们等候要与他们的救主一起在城外相遇 ，sharing his reproach， 分享他们救主在城外的羞辱。希伯来书第十三章第十三节，这样我们也当出到营外救了他去，忍受他所受的凌辱。But they do not yet flee the city of this world. 但是他们仍然还不能够逃离地上这个世界的城。For they seek the city and kingdom of God in the streets and alleys of the city of man. 因为他们就是信徒们呐、啊，是在人的城市里的大街小巷里追求上帝的城。上帝的国的 ，These pilgrims have a gospel message。这些过路客带着福音的信息。They are resident aliens far from home。他们是远离家乡的异乡客。But they are also ambassadors。但他们也是使者 ，charged to proclaim the kingdom of God。被差遣来宣告上帝的国的。第二段 ，Heavenly。Citizenship， 天国的国民的身份。These strangers do not lack citizenship。这些陌生人并不是没有国籍的。They have a city。他们有他们的城市。A city to which they come in worship。他们会来到这个城市敬拜的。Every service of Christian worship is a gathering to the heavenly Jerusalem。每一次的基督徒的敬拜，就是来到天上耶路撒冷的聚会 ，to the great civic assembly of the saints and angels， 就是来到圣徒们和天使们那个伟大城市的聚会 ，to God the Judge， 来到审判众人的上帝 ，and to Jesus the Mediator of the New Covenant， 也是来到新的约的中保耶稣那里。Paul writes， for our citizenship is in Heaven, whence we also wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 3:20. Paul 在腓立比书第三章第二十节是这样说的：“我们却是天上的国民，并且等候救主，就是主耶稣基督从天上降临。” Heavenly citizenship includes both present privileges and future hope. 作为天上的国民，包含了现今的特权和未来的盼望。The city of God is as real today as the risen body of Jesus Christ。上帝的城在今天是又真又活的，就正如耶稣基督复活的身体是又真又活的。It is as sure tomorrow as the new heavens and earth in which this His saving work will find consummation。上帝的国在将来也是。确定的，就正如他有一天要将他的拯救的大功带到完结的地步，带来的新天新地，在明天也是又真又确定的一样
The city of God endures. 上帝的城是永存的 ，because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 因为耶稣基督是昨天、今天、直到永远，是不变的。希伯来书第十三章第八节 ，All centers in Christ. 一切都在基督这个中心，一切都以基督为中心。The Lord of the city. 基督是城市之主。The Christian hope does not begin in utopian idealism and end in cynical power politics. 基督徒的盼望的起点、出发点，并不是乌托邦这一类的理想意识形态，因为那些的最后的结局，只不过是一种啊、呃、令人失望的、怀疑的权力斗争政治而已。Not if it is Christ-centered. Ah,、uh, 假如基督的盼望是以基督为中心的话，就不会乌托邦主义，也不会啊、uh, 堕落到权力斗争。The righteousness of the city is the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the Lord. 城市的公义是基督耶稣主宰的公义。Those who enter the city at last are those whose sins have been washed away by His blood. 最后能够进到那个城的人，就是有他的宝血洗净他们的罪的人。And whose righteousness is the perfect holiness of Christ. 他们穿上的义乃是基督的完全的圣洁公义。Because the city of God is both present and future, heavenly and earthly. 因为上帝的城已临，也未临。So, heaven is also in the sky. It brings the touch of heaven to earth. 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 The church, in another figure, 用另外一个暗喻来说，教会 is a lamp stand to hold Jesus Christ. 是一个灯台，啊，举起耶稣基督 ，the light of the city of God. 上帝的城之光 before the world. 在世界上面前做灯台，举起耶稣基督，上帝的城之光 To know Christ is to know heavenly citizenship on earth. 认识基督就是认识在。地上做天上的国民 ，heavenly citizenship on earth， 在地上做天上的国民。It is to experience a joyful communion of the people of God. 认识基督就是经历到上帝子民的喜乐的相交。It is to taste the beginning of the restoring of the world of eternal life and peace. 认识基督就是尝到万物复兴的开始。永生和平安的开始。That citizenship frees a man to seek first not his own things, but the things of others. 这种的国民身份呢，就释放一个人不先寻求自己的利益，乃是追求别人的益处。Because he seeks first the things of Christ. 因为他先追求基督的事。腓立比书第二章十九到二十二节。我靠主耶稣，指望。快打发提摩太去见你们，叫我知道你们的事，心里就得着安慰。因为我没有别人与我同心，实在挂念你们的事。别人都求自己的事，并不求耶稣基督的事。但你们知道提摩太的名正，他兴旺福音，与我同劳，待我像儿子待父亲一样。The zeal of heavenly citizenship drives Christian together. 天上国民的身份，就催使基督徒连接在一起。To care for the poor and the orphan in Christ's name， 奉基督的名照顾穷人，照顾孤儿。To seek the peace of the city where they serve the Lord， 在他们所服侍上帝之所在的城，祈求那个城的平安。耶利米书二十九章第七节。我所使你们被掳到的那城，你们要为那城求平安。
为那城祷告耶和华，因为那城的平安，你们也随着的平安。耶利米二十九章第七节 ：There is no gospel in a new social order. 建立一个新的社会、新的社会秩序，并不是新的福音。But there is the renewal of social order in the gospel. 但是在福音里面。有社会秩序的更新的 ，It is the King who brings the kingdom， 是那一位君王将国度带来。The Lord who prepares the city with foundations， 是主预备那个有根基的城堡。下一讲我们讲完这个天上国民的身份之后呢，就来到天国的钥匙和钥匙与佩戴刀剑的问题。